Show, uh, Miss Kay Barker and Mr. Robert Bootson are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss Kay Barker and Robert Bootson, eh? Miss uh, Barker, this is the first time in my life I've ever stopped talking to a platinum blonde in order to talk to a man with whiskers. <laughs> Mr. Bootson, huh? Where are you from, Mr. Bootson? Well, uh, I'm Boots, and I'm from, uh, I'm a native of San Francisco, even though some people think I'm a native from Africa. Parents. No, I thought you came from the bush country. <laughs> How old are you, Boots? Well, boots, ar boots. around... Logging up and down again. Boots. Around 35, of course, I've been living 20 years in the hills and in the mountains and the beaches, and they never caught up with me to send me my birth certificate, so I don't know how old I really am. Oh. You say you lived in the hills? That's How long? Right. Well, I lived there about uh, 20 years in caves and under trees and top of trees. Why were you living this, uh, like a hermit? Well, uh, uh, of course, I didn't have to pay any taxes living that way, and, uh, and uh, I, I felt very healthy up there. I mean, I uh, had a lot of air. I like a lot of air. Yes, you can get a lot of air there. <laughs> You mean one day the tax man came around and you, says, you threw the paper aside and says, well, me for the hill? That's right. Well, what did you eat when you were living like a caveman? Well, wild... Frozen chop suey? No, I ate uh, uh, wild berries and acorns and I'd climb high fig trees and eat sweet figs. I chased the birds away because they eat the sweetest. Yeah. And I ate sweet figs and grass. It's good for your eyes. Alfalfa. Cow's got good eyes. I want good eyes. That's right. You rarely see a cow with glasses. <laughs> And, uh, Boots, it's it, very difficult for me to pull myself away from you and talk to Miss Barker, attractive as she is, but, uh, your first name uh, is Kay? That's right, Gosho. Is that so? <laughs> where, where, where are you from, uh, Kay? Well, I'm from Blackpool, England. Oh, from Jolly Old England, eh? Yes. Oh. That's a seaside resort, you know. Are you married? No, I'm not, Gosho. You're not, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have a job? Yes, I do. What, what do you do? Well, I'm a butcherette. A butcherette? Mm-hmm. What is a butcherette? Uh, well, a butcherette means You put that, the uh, uh, panties on lamb chops? No. Well, first of all, to be a butcherette, you have to belong to the meat cutters and butcher workers union. Oh. I'm a cashier, and I'm also on the deli. You're a deli, do you say? No, I'm on the deli. Are you a deli. piccadilly or a deli? No, I'm not a piccadilly. No, I'm on the deli. You're on the deli? <laughs> when I'm well, not Well, how long have you been on the deli? I mean, well, you look pretty good to me. Uh, four years now. Well, what is a deli? Delicatessen counter. <laughs> I thought you were hitting the old stuff or something. I don't know. <laughs> How about you, Boots? You married? Yes, my wife's hiding somewhere out there. <laughs> She's probably swinging from a chandelier. Or <laughs> Where did you meet your wife? In a treetop or? A... Well, I met my wife out in San Francisco Beach, and I was beachcombing, and she was practicing her ballet, so I always dreamed of being in the Jinsky, so I went into my dance, and she got intrigued, so she decided to share the tree with me, so we decided to get married. We've been happy ever since. You mean you split a tree together? <laughs> well, when you got married, Boots, did your wife go along with this beachcombing life? Well, I mean, did she enjoy alfalfa and peanuts and that sort of thing? Well, she did for three months, but then afterwards the mosquitoes got her and they got peanuts. She got tired of peanuts and tired of climbing fig trees for her breakfast. So she said, I compromised and we, we got a half of a house. I mean, we got a little house, no. a little cottage, a room. <laughs> well, do you have a job now? Yes, I'm a, uh, I'm a singing fruit peddler. I peddle figs and peanuts in the beaches in the desert. Bel Air, Beverly Hills, can I sing and peddle fruit? What kind of fruit? Well, I peddle figs and peanuts and razor blades. I mean, apples. And... <laughs> what kind of a fruit is a razor blade? <laughs> well, show us how you sell your fruits and nuts, Boots. Right now? Not a very long sales talk, just about one more second. One second will be enough. Hey! Tree-ripe and sweet figs, ladies and gentlemen. The birds eat them. I eat them. And I went a long way in life. Feed that all. Feed that all. Feed that all. <laughs> <laughs> if 
you, uh, if you think the stuff he's selling is nuts, just listen to him. Huh? <laughs> I'll vote both I admire you. Uh, thank you. I want you to know that I admire a rugged individualist like God you. God bless huh? you. All right, now let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,500, Mrs. Wong and her partner are leading with $410. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You will get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. Okay, now what are you going to start with? 70? 70. 70. This is beard tickle. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Seventy dollars. All right, spell the word motif. Meaning the theme or dominant feature. Motif. Spell it and pronounce it. M-O-T-I-F-F-E. You spell it. M-O-T-I-F-E. Motif. <laughs> no. I think about six more spellings will get it. But... <laughs> No, it's M-O-T-I-F. That's what I thought. I forget the you just, <laughs> you just got too elaborate with that word. All right, now don't get discouraged. No, what are you going to go uh, for? you lost half your $100. You now have $50. Now what are you going to go for? $80. She says 80 and I say 80 <laughs> Okay, spell the word gnome, meaning a diminutive, a diminutive being like a dwarf or an elf. Gnome? Yeah. It's K. No, no, no. N no. N N U M B. No. N O M B. N N Y M P H. Midget. K N O. No. I'll give you thirty more chances. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. You had a number of chances. This, uh... I believe you lived in a tree, Boots. It's G-N-O-M-E. Oh, no. no. Well, you um, lost half your $50. Yeah. You now have $25. Don't get discouraged. You're going to leave here flat broke. <laughs> no taxes. That's right. The little ones are easy. The big ones are hard. Well, little ones. What if you, you get near one, I'm going to give it to you. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars? Okay. Spell the word committee, meaning a person or persons appointed to act upon some matter. Committee. C O M M I T T E E. Right! Oh. Oh. Well, you're climbing again. You now have seventy-five dollars. All $75. right. Now you've got seventy-five dollars. Last chance to beat the other couple. Shoot the works. Shoot the works. Shoot the works. All right. Works. Don't blame me. All right. Spell the word intelligible, meaning understandable. I N T E L L I G A B L E. Please let me do it. Go ahead, dear. Let's. I N T E L L I G I B L E. That is right. You wind up with one hundred seventy-five dollars. Well, thanks and good luck, Minnesota Plymouth. Thank you. I'm gonna buy. That was very good, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> and that means that Mrs. Wong and Mr. Henthorne, with four hundred ten dollars, in just one minute get the chance of the Minnesota Plymouth one thousand five hundred dollar question. <laughs> TV, top value. TV, top value. For a real buy in a used car, see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Let's take a look at some of these great DeSoto used cars in action. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer specializes in cars that were better engineered and better built. That's why they're better used cars. This 1952 DeSoto, for instance. The extra value that was originally built into it is still there. Remember how we described the 1952 DeSoto as a beautiful car and built for comfort? Those famous Oroflow shock absorbers smoothed out the bumpiest roads. 
They still do. And waterproof ignition helps you start your DeSoto on the rainiest days and keeps it operating in the dampest of weather. So great has been the demand for new 1955 DeSotos and Plymouths. Terrific trade-ins like this are now a top value buy. Now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of...